Hello, it's Bob on Wednesday the 10th of May. If you remember back to July last year, I gave you a taste of what it was like for me as a young schoolboy moving house to live on the island of Arran in the Clyde. I'm continuing that story as I promised. Back then in June of 1957, every P7 youngster across Scotland sat the 11 plus exam. It was the first national test for me and my, my eight classmates in the rural primary. A long, multi-page ordeal covering arithmetic, language, reasoning, problem solving, with an independent vigilator watching you. A pass or fail would normally determine whether you went on to the local grammar school or high school academic course, leading to hires in languages, science, further education, or the junior school the junior secondary, maths, English, technical for boys and commercial for the girls, involving bookkeeping, secretarial. I was to learn that for an island boy, a pass meant a whole lot more. At that time, there was no senior secondary school on the island. The town of Lamlash only had a junior secondary, which would take youngsters to a leaving certificate at age 15, with vacation courses, but no path towards a professional qualification. To get that, I would have to leave home and live in a boarding house to attend Rossi Academy. 50 miles away, involving two ferry crossings and a bus journey. So, that was the plan laid out in front of me. I went with my parents to Rossi that summer, chose one of the many boarding houses accommodating Arran teenagers across the town and spent the next four years there with home weekend visits every month. The start of term in August was traumatic. An adventure, going into a huge secondary school on the hill above the town, like a ship ready to be launched, built not long after the old one burned down. The difference from a small primary facing long corridor walks, big classrooms with glass everywhere, a bit like the recently demolished Forfar Academy. New subjects, with a different teacher for each one. A massive assembly hall, staff in gowns and prefects. School meals every day. Back to digs for high tea, often pie and beans, followed with the, the, three, the famous three-tiered plate in the centre of the table, pan braid on the bottom, scones in the middle, Fancy cakes on top, a fight to get there first. Sorting out the bedrooms, sharing, getting into a routine, learning from the other five boys in the house, ranging from S1 to S5, how to store clothes, sort school books and jotters in a huge box under the bed, queuing for the toilet and the weekly bath. That first month there lengthened into six weeks because of the weather affecting the September sea crossing. I couldn't wait to get onto the pier at half past four on the Friday to start the journey home. By the time I got back to Whiting Bay, haversack on my back with all my dirty washing in it, the evening was dark. Mum was waiting at the door with arms outstretched. I was in tears. Boy, was I glad to be home. Things got better after the second and the third months, although the routine of the summer schedule with visitors taking over the best rooms changed with the winter season. We schoolboys, from being pushed upstairs into cramped attic rooms with only skylights for fresh air and light, now had space to move in large high ceiling accommodation with bay windows and curtains. Suppers were pretty meagre, but there was always the weekend swimming in the local pool, cafe visits and the call box down by the pier for the weekly phone home. Reverse charges, of course. Harbour visits and getting into the second 15 rugby team. As there was no boys' brigade on the islands and I'd been a boy scout on Arden, I transferred to the Rothsey troop with weekly meetings, eventual promotion to patrol leader and camps on Butte and across Scotland. I hadn't kept up church attendance like back home in Whiting Bay, 
but found Trinity Church Youth Club and Bible class nearby. They had weekly table tennis and juice, meeting local teenagers. But the deal was we did a bit of Bible study and then sat in the gallery pew for the first part of the Sunday service. Unknown to me, my English teacher at Rothsey Academy was a church member and had suggested to the youth leader that I might read the Bible passage to the congregation one Sunday. What a stir that caused back at the digs, with the minister calling unexpectedly at the boarding house one evening, asking the landlady if he could see me. That was my first promotion to Bible reading in a huge church, with a sea of faces in front. Quite nerve-wracking. I realise that many of you have had similar experiences of being away from home for long periods. Some may think it's cruel at a young age, and it certainly wasn't pleasant at times. But it was a necessity for me and my family, and I think I learned so much about other people, about other places, and myself, that it did me good in the long term. I wish you every blessing this week. Bye, everyone.